welcome back to another lecture on mechanics of machinery in last lecture we have seen about the introduction to the subject and the term kinematic links and about joints we have studied so in this lecture we'll be studying about the kinematic pairs kinematic pairs is simply the combination of two links which are connected with a joint that is allowing the relative motion between them so we'll be studying in detail about these things before that i will be mentioning the different classification that we have to cover uh, there are different classification based on different criterias are there out of which we have to study uh, classification based on relative motion nature of contact type of constraint motion the type of closure and also based on the degrees of freedom we have to study so we'll be covering one by one first we will be taking the classification of kinematic pairs based on the relative motion so what is the kind of relative motion that is happening between the links that is forming a pair based on this criteria we are having five categories one is turning pair sliding pair rolling pair screw pair and spherical pair we will be seeing the turning pair first so this is based on the nature of relative motion so first turning pair it is also known as revolute pair here one link is having a turning or revolving motion with respect to the other will be seeing with the example or figures so here one link you can see so this is a binary link binary link he is having two connection points here one is this is one of the connection point where the, you can attach it to the ground or fixed link and another connection end is there which you can attach the other link so this is first link here there is another second link which is also a binary link so here this shaft end of this blue link will be coming in contact with the whole end of this link so that they will be forming a pair so the shaft will be getting inserted into the hole so that the kind of relative motion they are maintaining will be turning or revolving so that you can call it as a turning pair so here you can see the animation so one link is turning or revolving with respect to the other so this one is known as turning pair so next type is sliding pair so simply here the kind of relative motion will be sliding or one link will be sliding with respect to the other here you will be directly seeing the animation so here one link is there means a rectangular prism is there which is inserted onto a rectangular slot so that it is sliding relative to each other so you can call this as a sliding pair and here here having another third classification which is rolling pair here one link is rolling with respect to the other here you can see a flat surface over which a uh, disc is rolling so that the kind of relative motion is rolling which is a combination of rotation and translation so this is rolling pair and next is screw pair screw pair means here one link is making turning as well as sliding motion relative to each other you can see in a nut and bolt arrangement where the internal thread surface of the nut is coming in contact with the internal external thread surface of the bolt so whenever you are getting tightening or that motion of the nut over the surface of the bolt is an example that, so that they are forming a screw pair so here motion is uh, turning as well as sliding so this pair is also known as helical pair so this is the fourth one based on the motion and the next or last one in this category is spherical pair spherical pair means this is formed when one link in the form of a sphere is turning inside the spherical space or spherical cavity of another link here you can see a spherical cavity is formed by this gray link within this space and within that slot a blue link whose spherical end is encased so it is making movements within this cavity so that this two links will be forming a pair which is known as spherical pair so these are the classifications based on the nature of motion one is turning pair sliding pair rolling pair screw pair and spherical pair next we will be going to the classification second major classification based on the criteria which is nature of contact in this category you are having two types one is lower pair and higher pair lower pair means if the links which are forming the pair are forming a surface or area of contact then we will be calling it as lower pair and if they are maintaining a point or line contact between them it is known as higher pair we will be seeing examples here so lower pair means area of contact here 
in the this we already seen it is coming under the rolling pair based sorry turning pair based on the relative motion so here the shaft end is within inserted within the whole part so there is a area of contact and here thread portions are coming in contact so here also area of contact is there here sliding pair is there here also the rectangular bar is inserted inside the rectangular slot so there is also area of contact so all these examples are coming under the lower pair and in higher pair you are having only point or line contact so if you are seeing the rolling example here the contact is line contact type the disc is making a line contact with respect to this surface and here if you are seeing this mechanism is known as cam and follower mechanism this element is known as cam which is the non circular rotating element and its profile the construction of cam profile and detailed analysis of cam mechanism you have to study in the same subject and according to the profile of the cam whenever it is rotating there is an element which is following this motion and this element is known as follower so this entire mechanism is mechanism is known as cam and follower mechanism here if you are observing the follower is making a point contact with respect to the cam so that it is forming a higher pair here you can see another example which is the ball bearings where the balls are having point contact with the outer elements where it is making contact so this is also a point contact so all these are giving examples for the higher pair where either point or line of contact is maintained so this is the second classification of kinematic pairs next we are going for the third classification based on the criteria which is constraint motion or in how in what how controlled manner the uh, relative motion is happening first one you will be calling it as completely constrained completely constrained means the motion between the two elements which are forming the pair will happen only in say, single direction and it is independent of the direction of load that you are applying here you can see a sliding pair where a rectangular bar inserted in a rectangular slot so here the only possible motion is sliding or translation here this sliding element will be moving only in this direction so it is independent of other conditions so because only possible motion is this one so this one is known as completely constrained kinematic pair and incompletely constrained means the motion is not controlled in a specific manner means the motion between two elements of pair is possible in more than one direction and it will be depending upon the direction of applied load here if you are seeing this one you can see an example where a circular shaft is inserted in a circular hole here for this pair two motions are possible one this circular shaft can translate in this direction and since being it as it is a circular shaft it can rotate in this direction if you are applying this axial load this will be translating if you are applying a rotational moment then will be it will be rotating that means their motion is possible in two direction and that is depending upon the direction of load applied so this is coming under the incompletely constrained motion and the third category in this one is successfully or completely successfully constrained sorry here not completely is not successfully constrained motion here the motion between element is possible in more than one direction but it is uh, occurring in a single direction because of some external means the best example for this one is slider crank mechanism if you are seeing you are having a cylinder here which is inserted in the uh, sorry you are having a piston here which is inserted in the space of a cylinder so this cylinder can actually have two motions similar to here it can this reciprocate as well as it will be rotating but here the rotational motion of this piston inside the cylinder in this way is arrested because it is connected to the crank through this connecting rod so this connections with respect to this connecting rod and crank is making the piston to move only in the sliding way or translation only is possible even though it is circular it is able to rotate but that is arrested because of this connections so here motion is possible in more than one direction but it is acting in a single direction because of some external means this is known as successfully constrained motion so this is the third classification next we are going for the fourth type of fourth criteria this is based on the closure so that you are having two types in this one one is known as form closed pair and another one is known as force closed pair here form closed means the pair 
between the links is formed due to their geometrical specifications or their shape then it will be known as form clause pair example here you are having a sliding pair example that means here rectangular bar inserted into a rectangular slot and contact is made because of their geometric shape one is rectangular bar and another one is rectangular slot so they automatically maintain the uh, pair between them because of their shape this is another example shaft inserted into this circular hole this is also forming a form closed pair if you are seeing the force closed pair here the pair between the link is formed and maintained due to some external force it is known as force closed pair here you will be seeing the example which is cam and follower mechanism i already mentioned cam is rotating element and follower is this translating element which is following the motion of this one so whenever this cam is rotating it will be lifting this one but it will be coming back because there is a spring element is used so whenever this is rotating this will be pushing up so spring is being compressed and whenever it is rotating in this direction that spring force will be making to maintain contact always so there is an external force is acting which is making the contact and maintaining the contact between this link within the pair this is known as force closed pair and last one is one of the major criteria is based on the degrees of freedom so first we will be based before the classification we will be seeing degrees of freedom of the pair we have to discuss before that we will be uh, defining the degrees of freedom of a single link or a rigid body you are knowing that a kinematic link is a rigid body not necessarily it should be a resistant body so anyway you will be seeing the degrees of freedom of a link so it is a rigid body and any rigid body in space can have the following independent motions so if you are considering this rigid body it can move along this x axis y axis z axis so three translational motions are possible and it can also rotate about each of these axis so for any rigid body translation motion about x y z is possible and rotational motion about x y z axis all are also possible so the total degrees of freedom of any link or any rigid body in space is 6 degrees of freedom and now you are connecting this links or you are making pairs so that you will be making connections so whenever you are making connections you will be losing some degrees of freedom and here you have to find the degree of freedom of a kinematic pair so when one link is making connection with another link to form pair it imposes certain constraints or restraints on their relative motion therefore their degrees of uh, freedom of this pair will be getting reduced and then we have to define a degrees of freedom for this pair which will be equal to total 6 minus the number of restraints which is imposed because of the connections so about this degrees of freedom and their classification will be studied so anyway this number of restraints will not be zero zero means there is no connection so that there is no pair formed and this number of restraints can never be 6 also if it is 6 then 6 minus 6 equal to zero then it will be becoming a rigid body so number of restraints can never be 0 or 6 if 0 there is no connection if it is 6 then it the combined connection will be acting as a rigid body so the number of restraints will be varying from 1 to 5 and based on this values what is the number of restraints you will be having the classification of the kinematic pairs so if number of restraints is 1 then degree of the freedom of kinematic pair will be equal to 6 minus 1 which is 5 and that one i will be calling as class 1 pair so class 1 pair if i am calling a kinematic pair means number of restraints is 1 but its degrees of freedom will be 5 so there is for number of restraints are varying from 1 to 5 so there are class 1 pair class 2 pair uh, pair and up to class 5 pairs are there so we'll be seeing 1 by 1 so therefore a class n pair means it is having n number of restraints so here you are seeing a class 1 pair where a kinematic pair is formed by a sphere which is making contact with a plane so it is forming a pair as it is having contacts and here if you are seeing there is translation of this element along x direction is possible translation along y direction is possible but translation along z is not possible if it is moving then contact is broken then no longer it is a pair and rotations about all about all axes are possible so here only one motion is arrested which is translation about x 
so the number of restraints is 1 and the degrees of freedoms are 1 so for the possible degrees of freedom translations i am representing it by this green arrows and rotations i am representing by the red rotational arrows so here 5 degrees of freedom you can see as it is a class 1 pair number of restraints is 1 so here class 2 pair number of restraints is 2 and degrees of freedoms are 6 minus 2 which is 4 here this is example where sphere is inserted in a cylinder it can move in x direction sorry y direction so one translation is possible but translation in z and y direction is arrested so that i am not representing any green arrows on this line but it can rotate in x about x axis about y axis and about z axis so three rotations and one translation possible so in total four degrees of freedom for this kinematic pair where two are arrested so it is known as class 2 pair here you are having class 3 pair example the spherical pair where a spherical end is making connection with the spherical cavity so here no translations are permitted but all the rotations are permitted so it is having three degrees of freedom which are three rotational motions so three constraints and three degree of freedom so it is class 3 pair and you are having here class 4 pair means four constraints or restraints and num degrees of freedom will be 6 minus 4 which is 2 here you are seeing a shaft which is inserted in a circular hole so here the allowed or permitted degrees of freedom or permitted motions are one is sliding or translation along this axis so green arrow is here and rotation about the same axis so these two motions are only possible so here it is coming under the class 4 pair and here you have the class 5 pair where the number of restraints is 5 or the allowed degrees of freedom is 6 minus 5 1. Here you are seeing the example for a sliding pair where a rectangular bar is inserted in a rectangular slot. So it is able to move only in this y direction that is the only allowed movement. So here degree of freedom will be 1 or the arrested is 5 so it is coming under class 5 pair. So this is the classification based of the kinematic pair based on the degree of freedom. So now we have seen the different criteria for classification based on the motion, based on the contact, based on the closure, based on the constraint motion and here based on the degrees of freedom also. Hope you understood. In the next lecture we will be seeing about the mechanisms and their degree of freedom. Before that I have a question for you. What is the degree of freedom of this one? This is a uh, screw pair where a nut is making this movement turning as well as sliding. Here you can see it is turning as well as sliding. So you will be answering the degree of freedom as 2 but the degree of freedom is 1 because this two movements are not independent means if this uh, nut is turning then it, it will automatically advance based on the pitch value of this thread means if it is rotating this will be moving. So these motions are interconnected so you cannot happen a single motion at a time if one rotation motion is happening then it will automatically slide so these are interconnected so their degrees of freedom is only one for this screw pair so this you should understand